now that we have all these people in the room, is a great idea. Tom, another great idea, another one. And uh, so, just got that, didn't you, huh? Yeah, did. yeah, 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 it's another nice, one. Nice so we, um, uh, it's great to, uh, to, to see all you guys again. It's been a couple months. And uh, so we're, uh, as I, if any of you that followed any of my tweets, I've seen most of you are, that last week was a great week to be able to, to go with the Abigail and uh, the Abigail and Austin Hatch be married and uh, end up being with Mo on Thursday and then start the cycle all over again with those five young men we welcomed here Saturday. Uh, our, uh, the, return, the other returning players will be, um, and all, our, all the other players are returning, but the other players will, will, will have a meeting today. We have our first practice tomorrow. Uh, great rule by the NCA that now we can, that we are allowed to have eight hours a week with them. But ba basketball skill development was only two. Now they've doubled that to four, still only eight hours, but they really didn't need six hours in the weight room a week. So we are really uh, excited about our ability to, to start the development earlier and, and get more volume in in the summer. So um, we feel good going into the, to this, this period. We, as, you, as we announced, uh, we have a trip that we are gonna go to, uh, to Spain in the end of August. Uh, you're not gonna get, my plan is not to give a whole lot of information out on this. Uh, for, for reasons going to America, a, a team from the USA going to America or going to Europe is, we, 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 we will be uh, communicating about it, uh, but don't look for all the details. Uh, what we're going to do is go treat this summer as a great time to get better. And uh, we're, we're excited about the team, we really are. So we are excited about last year and just uh, seeing those, those three guys graduate um, Austin, Muhammad, and Duncan. Um, you see, uh, it, Geron Simmons now is signed with a team in Switzerland, and now we usher in the new guys, and hopefully we can be as successful with this, in this era of Michigan basketball, if we could call it an era as we were in the, this, this past one that came with, uh, after the championship in 14 to 18, there was another growth spurt with our program. I don't know whether we're back to where we were in, in 14, 15, but I, I hope not. But whatever it is, we're just gonna try and grow it again and try and do some of the special things we were able to do this these past couple of seasons. Coach, thanks for the time. Um, and the final analysis as you look back on your decision to stay at Michigan instead of going for the allure of the Pistons job, what were the primary factors that, that held you here that brought you back here? Well, make no mistake, I was not offered the job by the Pistons. I was certainly, we certainly had some mutual interest. Um, and, uh, but they, I think they had a great candidate. Um, and uh, Dwayne Casey is tremendous kind of coach of the year. And so as a result, it was, it was fa fairly easy from that standpoint where there's alluring things about just coaching basketball. Um, but at the same time, I like really being around young kids that are, Developing, and you can do the things that you, you that we the, the things I just spoke about. That you get to see a kid like Austin hatch through his the, the, that period in his life, and watch go to Berlin and see a kid at 17 years old and skinny as all get out, go with the Lakers, and then end up saying, "Let's do it again." So I think that's that's a primary reason why I, I th believe this is a great fit for me here at Michigan. Hey, coach. Uh, you bring back, bring back three regular starters, a couple other guys that started at some point, but then also no seniors and five, yeah. uh, you know, five incoming freshmen. I guess, how do you view this team as far as yeah, experienced or, or not? Or there's only there's uh, there's only three people who have junior senior written next junior or senior written next to their their name. So that's more whatever you want to call it, remodeling, rebuilding, whatever you want to call it, but this, we've lost a lot of talent in the last two years, a bushel load of talent. And you, you can replace it some years, the replacements are immediate, but some years the replacement takes two years and um, two or three years to develop that, so who knows? But it, that we lost an awful lot of really uh, talented players, both offensively and de defensively, but probably most importantly, we lost in the last two years tremendous teammates. And this new, this new generation of 
Michigan basketball. Um, they, they, they may have taken that for granted. We have to work at being a great teammate, and that will be one of the things we'll teach all, you know, all summer long. And then you had these camps this past weekend. Um, as you look at like scholarship situations for mm -hmm. next year and beyond, how do you manage trying to predict yeah. versus how many players you I should said, be? We, we have to deal with probability. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we aren't shy at, at going over our limit if we feel we can go one over our limit in the Big Ten with, with sign, signees. Uh, if, we, uh, if the probability says that we're, you know, you're going to lose someone to the pros or you're going to lose someone to transfer. And basically it's happening, you know, with every program. We, our thing with transfers has probably been average. Our average of guys, our, our probability of guys going to pros is like really high. Um, and so we're, uh, we, we just got to work at it and you hand out the scholarships or, or, or offer the scholarships very, with, with great caution to make sure that we can honor that scholarship when the time comes. Since uh, Mo's announcement that he was leaving, how have you seen that, I guess, have an effect on John Teske, knowing that he's going to be called on to yeah. for a much larger role? Yeah. John did a great job. John's been here all, he'll be here 16 weeks of, of the summer. So out of what, 20 weeks or maybe seven, maybe 18 weeks of summer, he's, he's here uh, 16 of those weeks. So uh, I think he's driven. I think he knows he has to, he has, it's not about him playing 10 minutes a game anymore. And so uh, I've seen some really good progress from him, and um, but he's the key for us. There's no question. As is Austin Davis, and Colin, all those guys, and and who knows, we could even play smaller than that. So it's going to be interesting to see how we do it, and we'll know we'll have more answers as we go along. But um, John John Teske has in Camp Sanderson for 16 straight weeks. Um, ten, uh, eight of those weeks are on his own volition. The other eight weeks are mandatory from the coaching staff. So that shows a lot right there, that he is, he's really doing a great job, and I think you'll see results. John, you've always been kind of a low prof profile, under the radar kind of yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, I like that. But now you've been in the championship game and yeah. uh, interested in the NBA. Are you prepared for, maybe there's a higher level of of how people view you with all this attention? No, I, I want to go back to just, you know, uh, I realize it comes with the territory a little bit, but I do like being, a, I want this program to be so much about our players and not about our coaching staff, or, me, or in particular me. I'd like rather have it be about our coaching staff. So it is, it's, I'm not comfortable with it, but I do realize it now when we were leaving the NBA draft the other day, and that um, a lot more people know who I am than I think. So we were, it, it, is, it is something that we just, I, I love it. Every, I want to still make sure, Bob, every time anybody stops for a picture and uh, an autograph, I want them to feel special about it, which could mean it's a long time to get, a, get in and out of a restaurant, or in, in, but Kathleen's fine with it. My staff is fine with it. It's part of our brand. I would want our players to do the same thing. F on the positive side, doesn't it also raise the profile of the program itself yeah. and, and more and more people, not just the championship yeah, yeah. game, but the NBA thing? Because people yeah. didn't view you as that, the NBA yeah. guy. Yeah, the, um, well, the, 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 the hope is, is that it will, it will assist us in a lot of ways, that people will, uh, the recruiting will be better, uh, credibility when kids come to our program is better, our, our coaching staff continues to grow through it all. And then we have, it is Michigan, and, and um, you know, they should have a basketball coaching staff that is viewed as, as uh, you know, with, with a great deal of credibility. So uh, I'm, 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 comfor I'm comfortable with any, I'm comfortable t to the most part. I, I'm not comfortable with praise if it comes my way. And I'm, but I'll keep working at it. I'll keep working at it. <laughs> So you liked it better when people were calling you Coach Beheim? Yeah, yeah, that would be better. That would be better. Call Jim or Coach Beheim. That's right. Uh, we see these Twitter videos of X working on his jumper consistently. What are your expectations for him in that? Yeah, I haven't respect? seen those. Will you forward those to me? Absolutely. I would like to see those. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, I think, and I saw Iggy had a, tweet, uh, a couple of videos out, so I said the, uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the other Canadian that we had in here with Nick with his famous shooting in the snow videos. No, this is a thing he knows he has to do. We talked about it in the, at the end of the summer, but in those 10 weeks since he left, um, 
were not allowed to work with him at all. And so he, but we did uh, talk with him before he left. And I think I, and I was allowed to send him a video of what I believe are the basics of shooting so that he and his dad could work at it. And so uh, I'm, if, uh, if X can shoot like I think he, he's really worked at right now, that's gonna be really important to us. And then he's still, we still, but that's, you know, he still does so many other things for us right. that, that he's important in every way. And then we read that Mar had a broken foot. Do you know what the yeah. future is for him? Yeah, I think that is, it is a uh, yes, and it's it's very op it's very positive that he'll he's he'll be back and at full strength very soon. Uh, I think he had one NBA tryout and went really well, and then all of a sudden he ended up breaking the foot. So he is uh, it's it's fully fully repaired, and he's going to be really he's good. I don't know what the plan will be, uh, but it did negate some of his opportunities to, to play in the rookie league this summer. Uh, John, you're bringing in one of your more highly touted recruiting classes, and obviously they have high expectations for themselves. Yeah. I guess what expectations do you have for them as freshmen? Yeah, it's, uh, as you watch this thing, it's a great question. As you watch this thing, James, it's like, is it, uh, and I've said this over, so I hate to be redundant, but uh, I love I love our guys the, that, uh, just as much as the guys that came in and their first year, they either had somebody in front of them that really played well, or they weren't as comfortable uh, playing college basketball. But by their junior year, the DJ Wilsons, the Mo Wagners were really good. And, but you also have the Tim Hardaway and the Trey Burke. And, um, you know, Nick Stoss just came in here making plays. Glenn Robinson, they were as freshmen, you could see. You'd, you'd obviously you'd prefer to have the first one, but it really doesn't make a difference. It's part, you embrace it and you get them to grow. And uh, I think it's very similar in the, in the NBA. You'll have some guys that will come in and, you know, right away, they're, 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 they're Jason Tatum, they're getting it done. But then other ones, uh, it could be like Giannis at Milwaukee. He wasn't a star as a freshman, now he is. So you just go through it. And then obviously they just arrived on campus a few days ago, I guess. How critical is this point of the year for them before the season? Yeah, I, I think the big thing, the, the most important thing right now is g understand the academic rigor at Michigan. And that whole summer they can get way ahead. Um, they can get six hours ahead of their classmates that are coming in in September. Um, they learn how to navigate uh, th this university. And that, that's really, that's the main focus of the summer. Make no mistake about that. Along that way, we can find these pockets to teach them some of the fundamentals that are really important. And uh, it will be boring for them, but we, everybody understands in the long run, you gotta learn to add and subtract before you end up multiplying or going to calculus. So we, we're gonna teach them how to add and subtract, assume they know very little, and then just grow it from there. Uh, Jordan and Isaiah, I mean, they, they arrived a year ago, and now they're the old guys. You yeah. kind of touched on it with some of your the wise old men, yeah. Right, but like, I mean, I mean, how have they responded? Because they got probably a little bit, you know, more run their freshman year than maybe they they were thinking, but now they're expected to be kind of the guys. Well, I think that they, I, I don't know, they're they're going to be uh, those, those secondary leaders for us. I don't think it's it, there's going to be any questions that Charles uh, Xavier probably will emerge as real leaders on this team. They have, both have a lot of game, as much, both of them have a full year of game experience, of real game experience. Um, after that, everybody's been, had cameo roles on the team, and including those two. Uh, but we, they've been both here the whole summer as well. And those two are showing great, uh, just great strides, um, because we have worked them out, that we've picked three weeks to work them out. And I see some great strides, and they're they're learning what it is to be in the gym, or be purposeful in the gym. Because both of them are gym rats, but some kids spend two hours in the gym and don't get anything done. We're trying to get them. You can be an hour in the gym and really get work done, but you should be in a full sweat by that time because it's really purposeful. Hi, Coach. Um, you Hello, were Joy. obviously at the draft with Mo and his family. Yeah. So can you just tell me about your emotions when you heard his name get called? Well, we, it was, uh, we had significant interest uh, from some teams in the teens. So it, it delayed, 
it made it more, there, there was more drama because there was interest from teams that were earlier uh, than the Knicks. So when they didn't pick him, it, we, we, let, we let down a little bit. The morale went down a little bit and we tried to pick it up. And uh, just sitting there and, and knowing the Lakers was a real possibility, if that didn't go, then this drama just builds. But uh, Rob and Magic called uh, uh, Mo's agent like right behind us. As soon as I heard the phone ring, uh, and I saw this smile, and then I saw him getting a mo, and saw the tears. I knew what was happening. But it's so uh, Dre was there with me. Our whole co we had five of our of our six uh, coaches and staff with us to see the camera. The cam you'll know who they're who's getting drafted by the cameras start to move, like in in the 30 seconds before the name is announced. But we already knew because we were hearing it on the phone. And now the cameras start moving, and there's Mo looking at the cameras. It's it's a great moment. It is a great. And I've, I've been there before with Trey and with Nick, and uh, it was special to be there again. But it is, it is a, a culmination of a lot of work. No, no one knows how hard that young man has worked, and how as a 17-year-old he left his home country and just put all his faith in the University of Michigan. Just go back to the NBA thing for a second. What was because I, I read, I think you said on a radio station that you felt reinvigorated almost after yeah. going through it. What was the appeal to you of going through it? And was it to prove people wrong who said you couldn't do it or <laughs> yeah. wouldn't do it? A, a combination of things. I think number one is I love coaching basketball a lot. And you're watching the NBA playoffs and you're seeing what guys are doing and you're looking like they're running stuff that we run. Now, I don't know if they watched us or I watched them, but we're running and you can see, boy, if you have really highly skilled players, it would be, it, uh, Brad Stevens kept telling me, I'm having a blast. And when you hear those words and your season's over, and uh, so that's, that was appealing. And then, uh, you know, when I told Sam this, uh, uh, the great Sam Webb, well, I think we all know who he is. I told Sam this is when people said, don't go to, why are you going to Canisius? Why are you going to Richmond? Why are you going to West Virginia? Why, those are all like train wrecks. And I, that's why I'm going. And um, I, I felt that the, the Pistons was, were, were very close to being where I'm sure Coach Casey's going to put them. So, um, but then I was never offered the job, so I never really had to make the decision. And that would have been a tough one. Just to follow up to that, Ed Stefanski, who you talked with with the Pistons, yeah. he said when he was in Memphis that they wanted to court you for the Memphis job, but you weren't interested then. Right. Was How many times have you been poked around that, by the NBA? You, you'll never know that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to know that. We don't need any more attention to this matter. So it is, but it is a, um, it's, it's very, uh, I'm honored by any attention I've had. John, uh, you so last year you bring in Isaiah Livers, Kalamazoo kid mm -hmm. from Michigan, does pretty well in his freshman year. This year you're bringing in David and Brandon Johns, mm -hmm. both in-state recruits. Exciting. So when you see them come in Saturday, just what's the excitement factor from them? What's the excitement factor for you as coaches to see these homegrown kids yeah. try and make an impact as freshmen at Michigan? Well, there's no question. This is this is where we want to we we want to recruit from Michigan out. There's no question about it. we're the University of Michigan, but we also have a a strong following around the country. And so when there's a, when there's a young man that, that we're recruiting who wants to come here, but, uh, and there's others that want to come here more, then you're, you're tough, you're into a, a difficult situation. You know, I, I think we have two, we have a lot of good programs in the country. I mean, the, our Mac schools, uh, the, uh, Detroit, Oakland, they're, they're, I mean, everybody has had a lot of success over, over time, if you look at the big picture. Uh, but Michigan and Michigan State, I mean, you just find, find two teams. You you, I think if you find Duke and North Carolina might rival Michigan and Michigan State for the success in the NCAA tournament the last s several years. Might rival us with, you know, uh, how many people we have been able to put in the program. We got two elite programs in this state. And so uh, it makes a lot of sense for the right kids in this state to go to one of those schools. And, and so that's, I think that was my appeal to both of them. It may not be good recruiting. I said, why would you look past Michigan or Michigan State? These are two tremendous programs. And right here in front of your family, and they're, 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 they're as good as it gets. Uh, and so uh, we're very fortunate that both of those two, two uh, men 
uh, young men picked Michigan because I think they, they have a huge, huge upside and they love the University of Michigan. And they ran through these doors, committed way early. We didn't have to do all this, these, the, any of the, the, the official visits and all these things. They knew what they wanted and, uh, and they chose us. Coach, kind of building on that, there's building your program, but then there's building your legacy and then also family at Michigan, stemming back the generations. Yeah. And I just want to go back to what you said about Mo Wagner getting picked by the Lakers and Rob Palink is there, a member yeah, of the 89 yeah. championship team. Just what that means to you, what that means for Mo, and what it means to building that sense of legacy and family here at Michigan. Yeah, I think it was really uh, cool that Magic and, and Rob were both on that phone call together. That just speaks to what I just was talking about, of, of the, the success of these two programs. No, and, and throughout the league, you know, throughout the league, there's just so many, uh, in the NBA, there's just so many Michigan connections for us now. And uh, I actually, I, when I, when I, uh, when I was going to the draft and all the pomp and circumstance of the draft, I text Rudy Tomjanovich and said, what were you doing in 1970 when you were the number two pick in the draft? And he, so, he told me he was eating pierogies in Hamtramck <laughs> at the time of the draft. And I thought about how much that had changed uh, over years. So it's, we have so much connection with the NBA now with so many different players. I talked with Tim yesterday. I'm trying to call all of my guys right now in June where it's, and just try to you know, give, get updates from them. And some of them will come back in the summer and filter, uh, filter through. I want them to all come back to Camp Sanderson for about six weeks and they won't do it. I don't know why, but they won't come back. Chris? Uh, do you have an ETA on your contract extension? Is it true that you don't have an agent? That's true. Okay. That's true. Ward and I have been eyeball to eyeball. Okay. Have you ever had an agent? Or I, had, I had an agent. I had an agent up until I went to West Virginia. Okay. And, uh, but and went, once I went through, you know, I've had eight different jobs, mm -hmm. and I didn't have an agent for this for the first six, and then all of a sudden I got an agent for the seventh, and uh, I figured out why do I, I I don't need this, I can I'm I'm not I'm not really I'm not. I don't want to say I'm super intelligent, but there are some it's pretty simple things about a contract and talking man to man and getting an understanding. So Ward has been terrific through it all. And what's the ETA on the uh, on the extension? Have you it, it is. It is. Uh, we'll we'll get to a point where one T has to be crossed or something has to be, and then somebody's out of town or whatever. Uh, I'm hopefully before we hit the road, or it could be tomorrow, or it could be at least before we hit the road recruiting. I want. Uh, the recruits were, were, that we're involved with and, and our current players to know that, that the plan is to continue coaching. And, and then I know that it's important to your assistants, but how important was it for you to get them some more money as well? Uh, that is a, that's a thing that was very important to me and, and as well as to them and their families. So this is something that Ward well, I said, he, he came to me with it, right? We discussed it last year and then he came to me with it. So again, uh, he really gets it, and that was really uh, as important. It's an important step in our program as well. Thank you. Coach, are you familiar with the new NCAA rule regarding transfers? Yeah, uh, yeah, a little do bit. Do you anticipate it affecting Michigan in any way? No, I don't. I do not think so because we had just gone after all the um, the things we. I had a thing with Spike, and you know, it was like, all right, go. I, I, I uh, we're, we're not going to deny permission. Or, or, but it is good to know. But the, the backside is, if you ask for permission, because I've been held host, hostage before by kids thinking of transfer, but you got to hold on to a scholarship. The backside is, if you want to transfer, we're 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 going to give away give away your scholarship, and so that 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 brings some equity there. Going back to the uh, true freshmen coming in a little bit, yeah. how beneficial will this Spain trip be for them, considering they'll yeah. probably see some considerable time playing basketball. It, it, my, my hope is, Josh, is that we're going to get beat every time over there. I mean, I won't coach to lose, but but I thought think we the last time we did a trip, we went to Italy. And for whatever the timing was, it was a most fantastic cultural experience. But when you win every game by 30 or 40, it didn't get that team ready for New Jersey Tech and Eastern Michigan that year that changed our season a little bit. And so uh, we're going to go over there. I think we're going to play three pretty good teams, maybe even play the same team twice if we feel that it's, a, it's the right matchup. So the big thing is we get, we get extra time this summer already, and then we get 10 extra practices. 
So that's gonna be big for them with no limitations on practice. So that wouldn't be like, hey, we're gonna practice four hours. Let's go watch film, David, Iggy. Let's go, let's go, well, let's watch this, Colin. I want you to watch what Mo did. There's a lot of time in there that we can do things because once, once September comes around and now all of a sudden it's gonna be September 25th or something, we're gonna be able to start practice. So it's a, gr it's a great head start. But as we found out in, uh, back in, I guess it would be in 1415, yeah, 14, it, it was our worst season we've had in a long time, but there was other factors there too. Uh, going back to the NCAA rules, um, for football, they changed the redshirt rule to where players yeah. can up to four games. Would you like oh, to see something similar would be for basketball? I, I have said this for years. Give a kid up until the league January, January 1 and get, uh, have him understand it. Now, our thing is a little bit different that that, that fifth year transfer, it's, it would may lead to more fifth year transfers because more probably would say, and it's not about playing in game, it's about we would want, like Charles Matthews, when he was ineligible, the day of a game, John Sanderson was with him for an hour just working on his body, not worrying about him, uh, you know, having to play in that game. Well, you don't know in a game, when, when, let's say if John Teske had had to that point as a freshman, had played in games, you know, uh, and then decided not to, we would have worked a lot more with him on his body. Uh, but we could, we didn't know if we could need him a game, maybe, you know, burn the red, or, or, or uh, the, j overall, it's just a great rule. If we could go to January 1, all right, you guys realize you, you're, if we play uh, uh, on January 1, you've used, you've used up your year. If you haven't, right, then uh, you can decide to redshirt. Let them make the choice instead of doing it in the preseason. Great rule. Right. So you don't want to, you wouldn't want like a number of games, you just want that, a deadline if they were to. I guess either, either or. Okay. Either or, what do we use? We usually play, uh, now we're playing 11 games before, so I don't know what the equation would be, and when then we're playing 20 after. I guess we're playing 18 after, but uh, we're playing 13 before. Probably 10 games or something would be good. Five. Give, them, give them an idea of what it's like to sit the bench and only play five minutes a game, which they have never done in their lives, and that's hard to do. Now, get, now you understand. I remember DJ Wilson against Villanova. He went in, we set up a play, and he had a dunk. And uh, somebody came out of nowhere and pinned that ball against the backboard. He fell down, he hurt his ankle. And he came in the next, like two days later, and said, Coach, I want a red shirt. My body's not ready for this. And that, that now all of a sudden he's the 17th pick in the draft. That was a good move. And then uh, Chris Weber, he accepted Jim Harbaugh's offer to be an honor yeah. captain. Do you feel like that could be a gateway to, I guess, many? Yeah, I think I think we have to. Uh, we're, this uh, since the day that I got here, and of course there was five or six years where I was limited what I could say about that era. Um, and the, 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 but the, since the band's been off, I've reached out to Chris several times. I continue to do that, and um, we're going to continue trying to build bridges, and. Uh, uh, just really work at making sure there's a lot of healing going forward that we have this the men's basketball program has taken a lot of history has taken a lot of twists and turns I want every player that ever played here to feel like he's a part of that building including Chris and anyone else so we're uh, we're a part of our program and so that's a never-ending quest uh, with every player not just you know Chris and the Fab Five so we're really looking forward to the day that we get them back here and be with our team in front of crowds and things like that. It, one more thing on the contract extension. Do you view that as a lifetime deal? This is this is where it ends. Uh, when and you, you say it, it will NBA? be a rolling, it will be a rolling okay. contract. That that if I'm not notified, that that, that they're not going to roll it over, they'll notify me. So. Uh, yeah, I, this is this is new territory for just about everybody in their life when you get to this point. But I, you know, I feel good. I, I'm like, you know, I'm working out, Dre. Right? You see me, right? I'm working out hard. I'm working out, doing squats and everything. You know, so I'm I feel good. So I don't know where where it will all end. But the whole idea is let's not get to this thing where every three years we got to put an extension in, because. It's working, and Ward has a lot of faith in that. But and when the day comes, I'll know when it comes, and and there won't, as like I said, there won't be any uh, any big deal. It'll be like coach resigned today, you know. Uh, that's uh, and, and I know when it will be the right time, but it's not now. What do you think you would do if the NBA came calling again? Uh, yeah, I think that I ran that race, and you can't run that race too many times, and so I've ran that race.
and and that, and like I said, I don't know what I would have done, but I was really impressed uh, with with everyone in that organization, and I'll be rooting for him like I always have. Stan McGunny was a great friend of mine, and one of the first guys that that texted me um, when the word came out. So it's all. Uh, I'll be rooting for them, but I think that right now, I think where I'm right now in my life, I just want to make Michigan, you know, just the, the, this decade of Michigan basketball has been pretty good. I want it to finish this decade and beyond of just having this this really good uh, uh, a program that is always in the hunt for Big Ten championships, as you know, and that's anywhere in the top five. I mean, is is the hunt You're a couple of games out because because I think this league is about to really. Um, it's going to be excellent in the years to come. We had so many young players, we didn't get a lot of bids. That's the good news. The bad news for other programs is there are going to be a lot of good teams this year, and we better be ready.